All right. Jolyn Mercica, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, I'm Jolyn. Uh, you guys, have, some of you have seen me before. I've been with Jeff for about the past uh, 15 years. Yep. So I'm a lifer, turns out. Um, work in the Detroit, Michigan market. I serve as much of D Michigan and obviously Detroit as I can. Uh, yeah. That's and um, last year, you closed 33 units, uh, but you also had some challenges. And. Um, Quite a few of them. I mean, yeah. challenges, good challenges, and not so great challenges. Not, not so good challenges. And one of the reasons why I wanted you to join us up here is because everyone in this audience deals with things that happen in life. And the fact that, you know, JoLynn almost always averages 40, 50 transactions a year. I mean, that, that's been her number. Um, you know, you see on there, she wrote the initial buyer mastery course that we teach at Glover U. Um, we've made some changes. Of course, it's now called Buyer Business Accelerator. But when we think of an agent that kills it with buyers, I mean, you were like the epitome of it. And you were still, with the challenges that you had last year, you were still able to close 33 transactions and are going to do the same this year. And talk to us, first of all, last year, what are some things that took place that, that you were able to go through? So, yeah, 2022 was super rough year. Um, it actually bleeds back into 2021. So my husband and I got married. Yeah, we were supposed to get married 2020. Thank you, COVID. And that got pushed back to 2020, or excuse me, 2020, pushed back to 2021. Mm -hmm. And uh, three weeks before our wedding, my dad was diagnosed with stage four cancer. So thanks, Ed Milet, for starting this off great today. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that was, you know, I'm an only child. I was also an only grandchild. Um, main caretaker for my grandmother. My grandpa died back in 2017, and after he was gone, it kind of all fell on me. So uh, I was taking care of her. She passed away in November, a couple days before uh, Thanksgiving. And then um, I found out a month later I was pregnant. So that was cool. Now, hold on. Back up a second. <laughs> your, your, your dad did make it to your wedding. My dad was at my wedding. Yep. My dad got to dance with me at my wedding. It's probably, yeah. Yep. Yeah, so um, we get into, yeah, so December, uh, not long after our Christmas party at your house, I found out I was pregnant. And OK, wow, this is a lot. And then April rolls around. I'm five, five and a half months pregnant. We're actually on our top producer trip in Florida. And I get the phone call from the rehab facility that my dad was at while he was getting strong um, to start chemo that he had died. And this was also that lovely week after spring break when everybody got stranded in Florida last year. So there were like tens of thousands of people trying to get out of there. And I couldn't get a flight home. I never said goodbye. So it's tough. And then I had a baby. <laughs> Whoa, hormones, yeehaw. Um, so, yeah, last year was a roller coaster, um, to say the least. And I still finished, you know, not transaction number, but still my best year yet, volume wise. Um, actually, what was your volume? Uh, ten and a half million ten and a half this million. year. Yeah. So, in Detroit, that's really good. I mean, yeah. our average sales price is yeah. like a buck okay. forty. And I'm not talking like 140,000, I mean like a dollar forty. The average sales price. <laughs> You had to sell a lot of houses to get to 10 million. I mean, back when I started, yeah, our average sales price was what? It really was like 110,000, 105,000. It was under hundreds back was in really? 2009. 11, 10, yeah, 11. Yeah, it was it was bad news bears yeah. back then. But um, no, I was able to, you know, I don't know, it happened. Yeah. I did it. I was answering phone calls an hour after I had my baby in the hospital, and deals were closing, and life was yeah. good. So. You want to know what was really cool when I was um, listening to Ed, and maybe you had this thought? You are the one in your family. You know that, right? I am. Yeah. I yeah. was thinking about you. Yeah. Yeah. That made it hard today. Yeah. You, you're changing the lineage of your family. That's the goal. Yeah. That's the goal. That's <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. All right. So now that we got all the mushy stuff out of the way. Um, your favorite. <laughs> so this year. Uh, you wanted to do, your, your goal is normally 50. Yeah. This year you made a conscious decision to dial it back. I think you set your goal at the beginning of the year for 36. It was 40, and to be honest, um, I know many of you have been home with newborn children. Uh, yeah, you don't get to really put together a schedule. You don't get to really call your own shots. It's not about you anymore. So I said, you know what? 
as long as I can meet my goal of last year, I'm happy because that's my unreal life. I have been busting my ass for these past few years yeah. to be able to live my life by design. And I think that's something that we maybe need to talk a little bit more about. And you and yeah. I talked about this. It's, it's very exciting to hit our goals and keep growing our goals, but there's nothing wrong with your goals not only being your business goals. Yeah. You know, this is time I'll never get back. My baby's only gonna be a baby once. And after literally losing the rest of my existing family on this earth, you better believe there's nothing more important than that child and my husband. Yeah. <laughs> He is who deserves my attention, yep. and that's and my business will not falter because I have my team behind me. I have all the leverage that I need. Yeah. I have everything that got me through last year. Yeah, that will propel. Well, that was going to be my next question. How were you able to maintain, you know, still doing what everything that took place last year, you know, to be able to still sell 33 houses this year? You're going to sell 30 to 35 houses. How are you able to maintain that? when with everything happened last year and then of course the decision you're making now to step back from a look, from business but still maintain that level of production that that's pretty impressive how are you able to do that so we have a ton of perks obviously on our team at the Glover agency um, admin showing agents uh, just assistants in the office that can write offers for me do paperwork whatever whatever the leverage that is. So really leverage in every area that I could use it um, on top of that I have always been mainly you know sphere business 80 plus percent of my business is my sphere and my database and yep. something you were the odd one when when i say less than 100 transactions came to the database 30 of them were probably hurt <laughs> i mean seriously like you everyone was focusing on new business and yeah. you were just working family friends and database and jeff and i would battle about this <laughs> he's like no call your fizbos call your expireds and i did i mean yeah. i had to do my onboarding i had to do yeah. everything back in the day but i was like no work smarter not harder yeah these people love me and yeah. my prospecting wasn't traditional prospecting my goal was to be at every single social event i could ever be at because then you're already meeting these people face yeah. to face. You're shaking hands. They're getting to know yes. you. They're asking questions. Yeah. There's nothing better. So um, one thing that I have really been impressed with is your ability to connect with your database. And also, times have changed a little bit in terms of yeah. value that we add to the database or how much more value we have to give in order to get the same result. Talk to us a little bit about your kind of your original, when you hear database value proposition, you, the original one, we didn't even have one as a team. So it was just kind of you and your right. networking yeah. and connections. How has that kind of trans, uh, uh, transpired through the years? Sure. Um, also, something to be noted about that is COVID changed the whole trajectory of how we network and our database. And you know, missing that time with people was really critical. Um, because honestly, I had some of my best sales in years throughout COVID. Yeah. When no one could get into a home, the demand was even worse than it is with just this inventory shortage. So it was wild you know, navigating through that, but it was so many more phone calls, so many more text messages, yeah. so many more intentional touches yeah. on social media. And social media was always something that I was pushing away from as well. And yeah. I didn't used to, you know, previously, but when life got tough, you know, we're not sitting there sharing the doctor's appointments for the CAT scans yeah. and the radiation treatments and the trips to the hospital. And when that's all that was happening, there was literally zero desire to be you sharing thinking about that at all. on social media. Yeah. yeah, that just wasn't top of mind. So I had to get myself back into that mindset and really start to you know, want to talk to people again. Because also in, in a, a tough spot like that, you know, when you feel like you're the Debbie Downer in every conversation that you're having because things aren't going right in your life and there's literally nothing, these are situations that I couldn't change, things yeah. that couldn't, nothing could be done about it. Mm -hmm. You know, you start to kind of pull back because you don't want to be known as that negative impact every time you're talking to people. So. I basically had to retrain myself, and that's when you know I brought Greg Erlinger on board uh, to force me to re-engage intentionally, and you know be smart about what I'm sharing, how I'm doing it, and that has 
brought you know my database back to life more than just email we can't do just the basic oh here's your monthly newsletter email and oh how's this happy yep. house anniversary it's yeah. it's way more intense now congratulations on this milestone congratulations on your baby your marriage or this i'm so sorry for your loss whatever that is and yeah it's a whole different and now the office provides you know quarterly database plans for us so i can say oh cool yeah. I don't have to think about this. That's right. Here's my list. Make it happen. So speaking of quarterly database plans, what are one or two things that um, has been implemented or at least when we say, hey, here's the plan, pick and choose what you want to use. What have been a couple things that you see good value in that you've added to your database value plan? Uh, definitely, you know, the, the emails that we send out because that's just you know nothing that's such yeah. an easy you know something yeah. that should be happening regardless of it adding value or not because yeah. it's just a basic touch and they're not just boilerplate like crm nope. standard emails what what stands out to you about those emails what makes those different they're you know uh, upcoming events holidays here's something you can do here's you know a recipe for something that may work into your family gathering this weekend or you know, it's something of value or a market update or maintenance, you know, make sure you're taking care of A, B, C, and D. So it's something not only of value, but something that a lot of times can prompt a conversation or a phone call from it, mm -hmm. which is, that's the whole point, yep. right? We yep. want them to, to want to reach out to us. Yep. So that's just a good something to have in the back because I can call and say, hey, did you check out? Did you see this? Yep. You know, did you have any questions? Whatever that yep. is. So personalizing those emails. And, and making it more local feeling sure. versus just using the boilerplate stuff. Yep. Anything else when you think about adding value to your database? That yeah. Yeah, we do uh, what we call our VIP boxes each month. And what I love about that is we can send out to, you know, whomever we choose. And it's, it's a box typically with three to five different items in it that is themed to something going on that month. And what I love is it's such an easy send everyone that sent me a referral yeah. the past month. I'm like, oh great, no here's my top 10 list, send yep. them all to there and then send, send these out. extras. And then, you know, people love it and yeah. they talk about it and yeah. they it's not just getting and like say a, thank you. It's not like just getting a gift card in the mail right. or something. I mean, right. it's, it's like kind of a cool thing. Yes, which I do send the gift card anyways as yeah. the thank you. And then they get us something on the back end. And a lot of times it's something for the family. It's yeah. something, for everybody to use, so it's it's typically a little memorable, if that's yeah. the best way to put it. Yep. Um, and then, you know, on on top of that, it's it, you know the phone calls, calling yep. people for any client events we have coming up. Yep. What, you know, my own personal client events that I'm putting on. It's just a lot of reasons for a lot of touches. Yep. And that's what brings the business in. Yep. Last question I have for you, Jolyn. Uh, obviously, you've been around. 15 years, so you saw, I mean, you were with us long before Glover U even existed. I mean, you probably remember ideas of, oh, what would it be one day if we had that kind of thing? Um, which is really cool because, you know, to some, to some degree or another, like, you know, when you think of our uh, group programs, that was just all of the training we did internally, right? Neuro-linguistic programming, we turned it into a six-week, 16-week course. Listing mastery, marketing, buyer business accelerator, right? These are all programs that you have gone through as an agent. Yes. And now that they have been rewritten and updated and so forth, you're taking them as an agent, even though you're a Glover U coach. Sure. So you've been around 15 years from start to finish. I mean, you, you were with us back when the team was selling, you know, 250 homes a year, I think, was the, mm -hmm. was the year that, you know, when you joined where we were at. And you've been through all, everything since then. Tell us the one thing that's different about the way we operate and, and what you think is, is um, stands out or, or obvious that our competition is not doing or not doing enough of. Like when you think about the way we operate sure. versus our competition, what would you say about that? I would say it's the, the training all day long. That's something we've always done. Today, standing up and chanting the circle prospecting script, we used to do that every day. We, so we used to have 10 a.m. meetings that are now, you they know. They were five days a week. Every day. They're now three days a week. And we would stand in there with the eight of us that were there at that point in time, all glass windows, and we're all standing there screaming at each other with paper in our hands. And people are walking down Main Street. <laughs> what is going on in this, there? This looking people at would us walk like we in and crazy. Say, oh no, I think that was a client. Shoot. <laughs> but the thing is, we never really, I don't think we looked at it as, oh, we're being trained and oh, we're doing this because yeah. it was just the every day. Yeah. It was the norm. And then we were prepared so, yeah. to yeah. be on appointments. We were prepared to do these yeah. things. Um, 
having to onboard and hit the phones, yeah. things that so many of us are afraid to do now, that's how we, we started. Yeah. So what, what I articulated from that is training and coaching wasn't just like a one and done. Like, all right, 90 days, let's go hit it. No. It's, it's, it's life. Training and coaching yeah. is life. Like every day, every month, every year, 15 years in, still writing scripts, mm -hmm. doing your listing presentation, recording it, doing your buyer presentation, recording it, watching it, getting better with it. It's life. Yeah, we it's, do it every year. Every year we run through a buyer course. Every year we run through a listing course. I mean, we've got new agents coming on the team. We have people yep. that are gonna benefit from learning this the first time. And then you have us veterans that are gonna benefit from still doing it every year because yeah. we forget and yeah. we get comfortable and yeah. we rest on our laurels and think, yeah. I got this, I know what I'm doing. And yeah. then you go out and you don't get the contract signed. And then yeah. you're like, what the hell? Yeah, how is this new guy, <laughs> how is this new guy getting more contracts signed than me? I've been around longer. Well, the new guy is very active in training yeah. at that moment, right? Yep. Awesome, let's yeah. hear it for Jolynn. Thanks, Jolynn. Yeah.